Hi there, welcome back to the new video. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Pegasus, pre-training with extracted gap sentences for abstractive summarization. It is from authors from Google and was released early this year. So as you can see authors have given an acronym for the paper which basically stands for this P, E, G, A, S, U and the last S stands for sequence to sequence model, the S from there. So if we talk about the important keywords in title, abstractive summarization that we'll first discuss, then we'll talk about what is pre-training, then we'll talk about what is gap sentence. Okay, so starting with abstractive summarization. So abstractive summarization is a technique in which our AI system tries to write the summary of a given text just like a human would do, where it would first read the input text and then try to write a summary in its own language. So when I say in its own language, the model is essentially trying to rephrase the things that it has seen as a part of input sentences around what is important. Also, you might see some novel words here and there. So that is abstractive summarization in short. And the opposite of this is extractive summarization, where we try to train a system that learns about what are the important sentences in the input text and just simply extracts them. That's why the name extractive. Okay, so talking about the second keyword, which is pre-training. It is a technique where you train your model on very large amount of data such as from Wikipedia, from Common Crawl, on a self-supervised objective. So what do you mean by self-supervised objective? Which means you'll not have any labeled data. You'll try to create the labels from the raw data that you have. So for example, if you think about BERT, one of the objective on which it was trained was MLM, which is masked language modeling, where you have a sentence, you mask a couple of words, you give that as an input to the BERT model. It basically outputs the word that were masked. So here, as you can see, there was no labeled data provided, but by masking certain words in the sequence, you created a label which BERT has to predict against which the loss will be calculated. So this technique is usually done to equip your model with the understanding of the language structure, syntax and semantics and plays a big role in the performance when you don't have ample data during the fine tuning stage. Okay, so that is pre-training, talking about gap sentences. So this is one of the objectives that the authors have proposed as a self-supervised objective for their model. So as you can see in this diagram, so this is the base architecture of the model where they train against the two objectives. One is the gap sentences, another is the mass language modeling. But the final version of the model is just trained on GSC. That gives a little bit better performance compared to if you're training on both the objectives. So we'll see to those results later. So for the base architecture, this is the input text that you have that has three sentences. So you randomly mask some of the words. So here they have done for mythical and names. And you also mask some of the sentences in the input. They have masked this S2 totally. So as you can see, this is replaced with mask 1. This word was replaced with mask 2. And the first one is replaced with mask 2. I believe 2 over here represents second objective and 1 represents the first objective which is gap sentences. So all of this goes to the encoder and at the encoder output you try to produce the words that were masked which is what you do in BERT and at the decoder end you try to produce a sentence that was masked. So your decoder basically acts as an autoregressive model over here. Okay, so this is the entire idea. We'll see later to how did they come up with what sentence has to be masked in the entire document. So let's read the abstract. I don't think there should be something extra, but yeah, let's read it. Recent work pre-training transformers with self-supervised objectives on large text corpora has shown great success when fine-tuned on downstream NLP task. In Pegasus, important sentences are removed, masked from an input document and are generated together as one output sequence from the remaining sentences. Yeah, so exactly what we just saw, like you mask a couple of sentences from the input document and you try to reproduce those sentences at the output end. They evaluate the model on 12 downstream datasets from various domains such as news, science, stories, patents, emails, and they were able to achieve state-of-the-art results on all 12 datasets. Okay. They found that the model performs really good on low resource summarization tasks as well. So if you have just 1000 examples of input and output pair for any domain, if you use that to fine tune their Pegasus model, you'll be getting really good accuracies. This is what they're claiming. Okay. So let's read further. We find that masking whole sentence from the document and generating these gap sentences from the rest of the document works well as a pre-training objective for downstream summarization task. So yeah, they are trying to define a self-supervised objective function that closely resembles to the fine-tuning task of summarization. So for example, if you talk about abstractive summarization, where you're given your model, the input document, and at the output, it will produce a couple of sentences that kind of summarizes in a paraphrased form to what input document actually represents. 
So here also if you talk about the pre-training objective that the authors have introduced, they're giving a document that has n number of sentences. You mask couple of sentences and at the output end you try to reproduce those sentences. So here the model is also trying to learn an abstract generative format based on the unmasked input sentences. So they tested and validated that if the objective of pre-training closely resembles to the task in hand during fine tuning, it will be helpful. Okay. Also they found that choosing important sentences outperforms leading sentences or if you just randomly select any sentence and you mask it out. Okay. So they pre-train their model on C4 corpus, also on another corpus that has news like articles, which they call as huge news. Okay, so talking about C4. So this was the data that was introduced as a part of T5 paper. So this is the reference for that paper as well. So C4 basically stands for Colossal Clean Crawled Corpus, which is basically a subset from common crawl dataset. After you have applied certain types of filtering, such as removing URLs, keeping only the English sentences, so on and so forth. And after all the pre-processing, the dataset that was released to the community was of size 700 GBs. So you can use it, it's openly available. Okay. So under related work, they compare their pre-training objective with MAWS, Uni language model, T5 and BART. So T5, I've already talked about. Now talking about BART, so the pre-training objective for the BART was to add noise to your input sentence and at the output decoder end, you try to denoise the sentence. So the types of noise that the authors have proposed in this paper were like insertions and deletions of certain words in a sentence. They also tried jumbling the words in a sentence. All of this what they call as noisy functions and at the output end, which is the decoder, you try to rearrange those things and try to recreate the original sentence. Okay. Okay, so now talking about the strategies that the authors have explored in terms of deciding which other sentences that they should mask out. So they consider three primary strategies for selecting M gap sentences from the document D, which has N number of sentences. So the first is random. They randomly select any M sentences and mask them out and try to reproduce this on the output end. The second is lead, where they select the first M sentences from the corpus and try to produce those sentences from the remaining sentences. So lead is actually a very good baseline when it comes to dealing with news corpus. So it is seen when you're working with news like dataset, leading baseline is actually really strong where you output couple of sentences from the starting as a representative summary of the entire document where document is a news article. The third strategy that the authors propose is called principle where they select top M scored sentences according to some importance. Okay, so they have some importance metric with which they rank all the sentences in the document and from there they try to select top M score sentences. So the importance formula that they use is Rouge 1 F1 score, which is calculated between every sentence and the rest of the document. So as you can see, if you are at ith sentence, this is the score that we assign. You calculate the Rouge of that sentence with all the remaining document where you exclude the current sentence. So this you do for all the sentences. And finally you re-rank them and then pick the top K or top M sentences. So I believe here you can employ other strategies as well. Some graph based algorithms such as text rank, lex rank, where you can get an important score for every sentence in that graph. And then you can again sort them out and take the top M scored sentences. Okay, so in this, as you can see, all of the sentences are independently scored. There's no dependency on how a scoring would be given to a sentence based on other sentences. So that's exactly what they've written and they've called it IND. They also consider selecting them sequentially by greedily maximizing the root F1 between the selected sentences. Okay, so in this, they are basically trying to extend the previously explained independent scoring mechanism by maximizing the scoring of the entire set that you keep on creating over the time. Okay, so what do you mean by this? They have this algorithm over here. So you have this S, which is a null set in the starting, which is a selected set. Since we were supposed to choose M sentences, we loop this M times. You keep adding sentence to the selected set and take its root with the remaining set where you remove that set from the entire document, calculate its root, then out of all the sentences, you choose the sentence that gives the maximum score when added to the selected set, and you finalize that and add it to the selected set. Again, the loop continues. Now S will have one sentence in the second loop. You again choose all the sentences, keep adding them, take a root, then you check on the candidate which has to be the second sentence in the selected set, based on which is giving the highest root score. You again add it to S, now for the third loop, you have S, which has already two sentences in place. And similarly, this thing goes on till this reaches M.
so this is the sequential selection okay they also experimented with how do you want to calculate rouge f1 first is unique where they do a set over all the n-grams so that they avoid double counting of all the identical n-grams so this is one pre-processing that they do before calculating the rouge f1 the second is the original implementation which allows for double counting of the identical n-grams so now they have four combinations of independent sequential original and unique to how do they select the principal sentence okay let's move forward so this is one of the examples that the authors have given where they showcase how random lead and independent original perform so if this is the text that you have if we were to choose leading sentences then starting sentences would have been chosen so since they are choosing two sentences so n is equal to 2 in this case in random as you would expect you would sample any two sentences uniformly and for independent and original the blue ones are something that the selection strategy has given okay moving forward so as i earlier discussed in that diagram the base model was trained coupled with two objective functions one was this gap sentence which we have been seeing for now the second one was mass language modeling which is again similar to how bert is trained where you select 15 percent of the tokens from the input text of which 80 percent of the times you basically mask them 10 percent of the time you replace it by some random token and 10 percent of the time you keep them unchanged so they apply mlm as the sole pre-training objective and also along with gsd so after experimentation they found that mlm does not improve the downstream task at large number of pre-training steps hence they didn't choose to go with mlm for the final model which is pegasus large so the earlier figure that we saw it was pegasus base okay now they talk about the corpus in which it is trained so c4 is something that we have already seen okay so it was 750 gbs instead of 700 gbs and then you have huge news which is a set of 1.5 billion articles 3.8 terabytes of data of news and news like website from 2013 2019 okay so this is all the downstream task for which they okay so these are all the downstream tasks over which they kind of fine tune their model you have news you have news then you have research publications you have patent data set you have reddit discussions so all of these are basically over which they fine tune it okay so now they have experiments and all so as we can see in this figure where they have shown the results this is the size of all the downstream data sets this is base transformer pegasus base pegasus large when fine-tuned on c4 pegasus large when fine-tuned on huge news so we can clearly see the basic version of pegasus is performing better than the transformer base which clearly shows the effectiveness of the pre-training objectives that the author have introduced and clearly the large model even if it's c4 or huge news that has more number of parameters was able to outperform the previous state of the art in almost all the data sets with huge margins so as you can see it was 28.53 now we have 43.06 we had 40.80 now we have 57.20 so these are actually if you see the numbers these are really good gains okay so yeah the abstract they also mentioned about low resource summarization so as we can see in this figure the x-axis basically shows the number of samples that you have for that fine tuning data set y is root score where they have different color coding schemes so if you use pegasus large as your base model and you have just 100 sentences from this data set which are input output pair of document and summaries so the horizontal lines which are these dotted ones are basically zero shot performance and clearly with just 100 sentences you can jump your rouge to f1 from something around 10 to something around 15 and that is happening consistently across all the metrics if you consider rouge 1f or rouge 2f or rouge lf and not only that it's happening almost across all the data sets against which they have evaluated so this is actually a good result that clearly shows its generalizability and its performance when you don't have enough data which is usually the case when you're working in industry so advancements like these will actually give you a stronger base to build upon and not only in industry but also the languages that don't have much written literature will also get benefited by this okay so i guess we are done with the paper now yeah so i found this paper to be extensively written so this paper is actually around 60 65 pages long where after the references authors have given ample number of examples to the summaries what their model have generated i would encourage you to go through that as well i'll put the link of the paper in the description box okay so make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also comment down below for any paper that you want me to walk through. Make sure you share this video with your peers. 
whosoever is interested in such stuff i'll meet you in the next one bye